want to call the meeting to order for uh, East Greenwood Central School District Board of Education meeting at Belltop Elementary. Glad to be here. Welcome everyone this evening. Um, all board members present here, except for Mr. Yaboa. He should be here a little bit late and virtually we have Ms. Skomersky. So with that, we will um, please rise and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. So first order of business is our student council presentation from or representation from Ryan Seeley. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you very much. So uh, students and staff will be wearing purple tomorrow to raise awareness for epilepsy and student council will be selling pizza after school to raise money for the Epilepsy Foundation. On April 7th, student council will be running a blood drive for the Red Cross and we are currently encouraging all eligible students and staff to donate blood. We have also planned a field trip to Six Flags, New, Six Flags New England to reward our members who have gone above and beyond the past few years, especially during the pandemic. And some news that came out today was that Ethnic Coalition will be sponsoring the uh, talent show, our annual talent show, bringing it back for the first time in a few years. So yeah, that's all I have for tonight. Thank you, Ryan. Next, we have a the Bell Top Elementary School Bell Ringers Wall of Fame ceremony. I'll turn it over to Mr. Mark. Thank you, Mr. Bio. On behalf of the Belltop community, I welcome the Board of Education, Mr. Simons, Mr. McHugh, Ms. Cannon, Mrs. Wager this evening as we host the March 23rd Board of Education meeting. A long time ago, in a building much smaller than this, a group of wise scholars saw the value of fostering character building in their students. Their mission was to instill traits in students that would enhance learning and develop character that would endure beyond the elementary years. But how were they to do this? Well, they decided to establish a new tradition where they would challenge their students to branch out and grow into the good citizens, citizens they were meant to be. Then, one day, a few chosen students would return to their roots at Belltop to be recognized by the school for their accomplishments. These former Belltop students would be honored for attaining significant achievements in the areas of academics, citizenship, athletics, and the arts. Any citizen could nominate a former Belltop student who is a high school graduate and who has made outstanding achievements or commitments in one of the distinction areas. And this is how the Bell Top Bell Ringer Award came to be. 51 years ago, the tradition began. Former students that were select, uh, are selected would receive an engraved wooden bell to be prominently displayed in the Wall of Fame showcase. The esteemed individual would also be recognized at a school-wide assembly where they are presented with the inscripted bell denoting their achievement. At the assembly, they are invited to deliver an inspiring speech to the students of Belta. Let's see if you can recognize some bell ringers. <laughs> Dan Garib received the Bell Ringer Award for community service in 1987. 35 years later, Mr. Garib is still demonstrating citizenship and community service by volunteering at the DeFreesville Fire Department. He is a lifelong community member and now serves as the principal of Green Meadow Elementary School. Mark Halsey received the Bell Ringer Award for the arts in 1991. Outside of working at the East Greenbush Transportation Department, Mr. Halsey continues to embrace his talents by playing musical instruments and participating in theater. Lieutenant Gregory Kroll received the Bell Ringer Award for academics in 1997. Lieutenant Kroll 
is one of the leaders at the North Greenbush Police Department. He has been instrumental in assisting Belltop during their safety drills and training staff in safety protocols. After a two year absence due to COVID, we are excited to reinstate this tradition with an honorary recipient this evening. This individual has demonstrated leadership and all the distinctions previously mentioned and is considered a highly regarded colleague in our school community. At this time, on behalf of the Belltop staff, I now confer an honorary Belltop Bell Ringer Wall of Fame award to Mr. James McHugh for his dedication. <laughs> Mr. McHugh, thank you for your dedication and contributions to Belltop School and the district at large in the area of academic leadership. At this time, I'm going to invite Mrs. Lucier to come up and say a few words. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here. Congratulations. <laughs> On behalf of the appreciative staff at Belltop Elementary School, this evening we present you, Jim McHugh, with the Belltop Bell Ringer Award. As you are aware, this honor is typically bestowed upon former Belltop students who have attained significant accomplishments in the areas of academics, the arts, citizenship, athletics, and leadership. While you certainly don't fit the criteria of being a former Belltop student, you most certainly are, and always will be, a bell topper in the hearts and minds of all. Your approaching retirement is a milestone comparable to the moving up events or graduations that ceremoniously mark the accomplishments of an individual. And your bell top family, both past and present, wants to see that you have yet another accolade added to your list of accomplishments as a teacher, coach, and administrator. To say that your impact on Belltop Elementary School was far-reaching would be the understatement of the century. During the 10 years of your role as our building principal, you set expectations high while simultaneously supporting and encouraging students and staff to meet or exceed the levels of excellence you saw in them. One might wonder how you knew where to set the bar. What was high enough? What was too high? The answer is quite simple. Whether it was because you knew every child by name and forged connections with kids based on their interests and accomplishments, or because you connected with your staff on a professional and more importantly, personal level, you knew us and you knew how to bring the best out of the community as a whole. While striving for excellence from your staff and our professional responsibilities never lost upon you was the importance <laughs> of our connections and commitment to our families, the community, and our own personal well-being. Many of us fondly credit you for your guidance in striking the ever-present work-life balance in a career field where so often the work side of things carries over to home physically and most certainly mentally. Your balance of humor, <laughs> compassion, <laughs> and genuine understanding of what it means to educate and care for children built a culture in the walls of our small community school that we collectively take great pride in. Ironically enough, your own words come back to us tonight as we name you a Belltop Bell Ringer. I quote your message to Belltop fifth graders in the 2013-2014 yearbook. I am hopeful that your many accomplishments will lead you back to us in the future as a Belltop Bell Ringer. How fitting that your abounding accomplishments have done that very thing, brought you back to us and given us the opportunity to honor you for your greatness tonight. Your excellence in leadership is scored on the surface of a hand-cut wooden bell, 
but more importantly, in the hearts and minds of those you influenced and continue to impact here at Beltop Elementary School. Congratulations on being named a Beltop Bell Ringer. Wow, I'm uh, truly touched. I knew something was up when I saw Robin and Mary. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Lucier wrote this by himself. So, um, but I'm truly touched and very honored. And when I look back at my 34 years in East Greenbush, the 10 years here at Belltop are definitely uh, the years that stand out that I really cherish. So I love all of you guys. I wish you the very best. And I'll be keeping tabs on Belltop. But I'm thrilled to see all of your faces here tonight, and uh, it means a lot to me. So thank you very much. We have a few gifts we would like to share with you to mark this special day. Um, as you hang up your suits and ties in retirement, we hope you'll enjoy uh, a new addition to your wardrobe, an official bell top bell ringer t-shirt. <laughs> As a reminder of your years here at Belltop and the appreciation we collectively feel for your influence on our practice as educators and caretakers of children, we present you with a one-of-a-kind Belltop bell ringer plaque. <laughs> This next item is really a present for all of us here at Belltop because you were always such a gift to us. Oh. This here is a picture of Jim that we're going to hang in the front hallway of our school. There's only one other person who is hanging up in our school and that was Lillette Thompson. And I'm proud to say that both Lillette, I had her as a teacher for four years and I had Jim as a principal for 10 years, and you both have made such a huge impact, and I appreciate all that you did for us. And finally, while your wooden bell will proudly hang in the bell ringer case alongside the honorees from the past for nearly 50 years, this replica is our gift to you. <laughs> you. Again, thank, thank you very much. It means a lot. This inscripted bell will be hung up in the um, display case when we get a new one because our current one is full. <laughs> so um, we have plans here at Belltop to reach out to Columbia High School. I spoke to Mr. Harkin and the wood shop. Maybe we could have a former Belltop student help make a duplicate so we can start the tradition with your bell. Very All right. nice. nice. Mr. McHugh, congratulations. And remember, once a bell topper, always a bell topper. <laughs> that concludes our presentation for this evening. We are happy to answer any questions that you may have. Otherwise, I am respectfully requesting a brief intermission to enjoy some homemade refreshments and congratulate Mr. McHugh. Very good. Thank you. Um, impressive presentation, Jim, as always. Thank you so much for the district. And what an honor to be uh, uh, Come back to bell top and then to be uh, recognized like that so tremendous tremendous so yes let's take a brief recess and we'll uh, enjoy the refreshments that have been laid out and uh say congratulations to mr McHugh and okay. his family here get some pictures too so all thank right thank you mr Bino. okay you're welcome thank you very much folks we're ready to restart the um, board of education meeting okay, thank you for all the um <laughs> retirees for coming tonight have a good evening
Whack the gavel. Thanks. Miss Taylor? <laughs> No, no, no. She's she's hustling. <laughs> All right. Great celebration again. Congratulations, Mr. McHugh. Thank you, Mr. Mahar, for hosting and and honoring Mr. McHugh. And the picture, uh, it's incredible. Thank you. Moving on to the uh, next item on the agenda is the minutes, the approval of draft minutes dated March 9th, 2022. Any questions, comments, or revisions on the minutes? Seeing none, I uh, need a motion to approve the minutes. Kathleen, I need a second. Oh, Mr. Mark, sorry, Mark, you are not here. Okay, so you'll abstain. So second, Frank, all those in favor? All those opposed or abstaining? Mr. Man, I'm sorry, <laughs> approved. Uh, we're going to our first board forum. I'll start on my left with Cheryl, anything, Cheryl? No, Michelle, anything, you're good, John? Jennifer. Um, I just want to say congrats to all of the students and staff who participated in uh, Lion King Jr. at Gox this weekend. They did a great job. It's nice to see them back on stage again. And I know we have a handful of students in the local um, art show at Albany Center Gallery. And I don't know all the names, so I don't want to miss anybody, but congrats to them as well. That was a nice web story about that. Yeah. Too. Excellent. Kathleen? Joanne? Just a quick congr congratulations to Mr. McHugh. Um, no matter where you go, you've le you've left a legacy, and you definitely did that here at Belfast. Thank you for everything you've done. Thanks, Joanne. Frank? Same here. Congratulations. Thank you. Very nice. We now move to the uh, public forum. Residents, students, employees, and business representatives of the East Greenwood Central School District may address the board on matters concerning programs and or operations of the district other than matters involving personnel. Members of the board do not directly respond to citizen concerns in the public forum. If a response is appropriate, either the president or superintendent will contact the individual in the near future. Those persons wishing to address the board will be recognized by the chair of the meeting and should state for the record their name and address or affiliation with the district or business. While the board does not wish to infringe upon free speech protections, it must be stressed that the visitor's forum is not deemed to be an open forum. The board president will conduct the forum for the orderly and efficient operation of board business. In addition, any remarks which be considered defamatory or stigmatizing or prohibited will be held out of order. All comments shall be limited to five minutes. Is there anything you'd like to address the board at this time? No? All right. Seeing no one, we'll move to our next item, reports and presentations of the superintendent of schools. Mr. Simons? Yes, I'm going to do the presentation from near the podium area, so I'm going to ask Mr. Goodwin if we can get... There we go. Full screen's going. Great. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is our second uh, budget presentation. Uh, we are uh, working through a process within our district to develop the proposed budget for next school year, the 2022-23 school budget. Uh, we anticipate that that process after this evening, and we've received feedback from our board, uh, will continue through our next uh, board meeting at which we will present what we believe to be the recommended budget for the board to adopt. Tonight, we're going to extend our presentation from the last time to talk a little bit more about how the budget supports the academic success of our students, the co-curricular success in terms of our students being involved in after school clubs, athletics, and other opportunities to engage positively with our school district and with each other. Additionally, we're going to talk about any changes that we've made on both sides of the budget, the expenditure side and the revenue side since our last board meeting, which was just last Wednesday. We're going to highlight some of our costs associated with our salaries and benefits. At the last presentation, I indicated that between 70 and 80% of a school district budget is made up of the cost associated with the people that provide the educational programs and services. We're gonna detail that a little bit further this evening. 
Each year over the last several years, we have utilized the transportation reserve, which is monies that have been legally authorized by public vote of the community and vote of our Board of Education, monies that are set aside in a reserve that is dedicated to replacing aging, high mileage, less efficient school buses with uh, newer buses to ensure that our transportation fleet remains safe and efficient. Additionally, we're going to talk a little bit about vehicle replacements that are part of a vehicle replacement schedule for our maintenance and grounds department. We will also talk about something that may be new to our board and our community, which is a recommendation that we look at where we end up at the end of this current fiscal year. And we ask our board and our community to support the approval of a capital reserve. And we'll explain what a capital reserve is, how those monies can help our district taxpayers for any future facilities projects that we might want to do to continue to maintain and repair our facilities. Additionally, we'll talk about some things that we're still looking at between now and the time that we will recommend that the board adopt the budget. And we'll highlight again some of the important dates within the timeline to ensure that the budget is developed appropriately in accordance with all state requirements and that the public has adequate information to learn about the budget as well as our board election and other propositions that may be on the ballot. Continuing our district highlights at our last presentation, we talked about some of the accomplishments and recognitions of our faculty and staff. Again, uh, within the last several weeks, we were informed by New York State that Sue Shrek has been identified by the state as a master teacher. Master teacher program is a very competitive program. It not only involves the selection of someone to get an award or to be recognized, but it is also involved in the teacher making a commitment to involve themselves in professional development projects with other teachers. It is an intense professional development experience for our teachers and you have to meet certain criteria to be selected to be a New York State master teacher. So Sue Shrek, who is a grade five teacher at Green Meadow. We wanna congratulate her for representing our district so well, being selected as a New York State master teacher, reflective of a large number of staff members who receive statewide and local rec and regional recognition within our district. Additionally, we spoke about the high school graduation rate based on last year's graduates, the cohort from last year, our graduation rate increased to 98% of those students attending Columbia High School. We currently, based on those, uh, that cohort of students have the second highest graduation rate among 80 plus school districts in the capital region. So that is a credit to their students, their accomplishments, and all of our faculty and staff, administrators and board, parents and community. From the time those children enter kindergarten, to the time they cross the graduation stage. The graduation rate is not only a reflection of the exemplary work that is done at Columbia High School, but of the exemplary work that is done across the board at every grade level district wide. Our budget reflects an expectation that we continue the academic progress and achievement for all of our students and that we support the effectiveness and the success of our teachers. It was mentioned this evening by Ms. O'Brien that we've had a number of students who have been recognized in regional competitive art shows. The art teachers will say that we've had more people and more pieces selected this year than any other year. And it's a credit to the talents and the gifts of our students, but it's also a credit to the teachers who bring out the best in creativity in our students, our art department. And it also reflects upon the board's commitment not only to the core instructional areas of English language arts, math, social studies, and science, but to the arts and the other programs that enrich the child, children's experiences. Additionally, I'm glad to see as well that our performances have returned uh, in addition to the Lion King presented by our middle school students last weekend, uh, the Little Women production that I saw at Columbia High School was probably the best performance, maybe even better performance that I've seen north of Broadway. 
It was fantastic. It was terrific tribute to the work of the drama teachers, but also the incredible dedication of the students and the support of the parents. Our athletic program, okay, we know we have our uh, athletic director here, Mr. Leonard, who's been honored recently as the Section 2 Athletic Director of the Year. He will also be honored at a dinner coming up in a couple of weeks. Mr. Leonard, working with the leadership he has demonstrated, the support that he has provided to our coaches, his approach to making sure that children in our district are actively engaged, not only on the field, but in the community. We can boast of 44 sectional titles and six state championships over the course of several years. Additionally, every year that the New York State Public High School Athletic Association has sponsored a sportsmanship award, our students, our athletic department has received that award. That award is given because of our students' demonstration of outstanding character on our courts and on our fields, but also because of the numerous community service projects that our student athletes are involved in. We have 22 varsity level programs and each team has maintained an average grade point average of 90 or better. We always, every year, have a number of teams and a number of students that qualify us for the Scholar Athlete Award. So our athletic department is a complement and a support to the academic programs and Mr. Leonard and his team, they do a terrific job. As we move into the numbers, we wanna talk about both sides of the budget. We have the revenue side, which includes state aid, pilot payments, which are payments in lieu of taxes, and we have revenues that we receive through local property taxes based on the tax levy that is established by the board. As of March 16th, we presented revenues estimated at about 106.9 million. We have worked on both sides of the budget, Mrs. Wagger and the administrative team, to bring the proposed tax levy, which was about 2.99% at the last meeting. We've reduced that by a total of about $277,690. We have also reviewed the estimates that the state has provided school districts regarding BOCES aid, which is an expense-driven aid, we believe that those numbers across the state were a little inflated. So we adjusted those numbers down about 238,000.9 on the revenue side of the budget. And we made an adjustment to UPK because the UPK funding is based on the number of classes and the number of students that we, we are serving this year. We'll get the aid next year and the number, uh, the total aid that we qualify is not the total amount that the state has indicated in the state aid run. It's based on our actual program expenses of the current two classes that were contracted with, with BOCES. So on the revenue side, our revenue is projected at this point at 106,055,249. Again, to highlight some of the changes, we are still working to bring that tax levy increase for next year as close to zero as feasible without laying off any of our employees. And we think we can get there. We're just not there yet. So we brought the tax levy down about 277,000. The current levy at this point stands at 59,847,720, which is about a two and a half percent increase with a lot more work that we need to do on both the expense side and the revenue side of the budget between now and the next meeting. On the expense side, we balance our expenses with our revenues. We are required to have a balanced budget. Our, so our expense projection is lined up with our revenue projection at about 106.9 million. We've made some adjustments. Uh, Linda has worked through the final services request process with Questar. We verified student counts, enrollments of programs that we will have students in, such as our CTE program, our P-TECH Early College High School program, the Tech Valley High School program, 
and other programs and services that our students are currently attending on the program side. And we have also verified expenses that have come from other types of services that we receive from BOCES. And there are some further adjustments that we anticipate we may be able to make. So our budget that was presented last time for BOCES services has come down $1.2 million. And I mentioned the formula that, that is used to determine the contribution level of each district within the BOCES and what we contribute to any um, increases in the budget. The increases at Questar were very reasonable for next year. However, our share of the increase is going up because our property values, which is part of the formula, are going up at the highest level within Rensselaer County. And the um, that in combination with uh, some other factors is contributing to uh, why our portion of the BOCES budget is increasing. Additionally, we estimate that approximately two administrators and five teachers will be retiring next year. That is based on letters of intent that have been submitted to the district. We look at the salaries of the retiring employees in comparison to the replacement costs to hire replacements for those individuals who are retiring. And that will yield approximately $396,889 in savings. We shared with the board in January, I believe it was, a list of requests that have come through the administrative team. We are still reviewing those requests. In this particular portion in time of the budget, we have included some additional expenses within the budget that total about $686,000. Some of those expenses may be offset by other areas of the district that we're still looking at for further reductions. So our revised expenditure budget at this point is 106 million, 55,000, 249. Again, the revenue side of the budget is balanced with the expenditure side of the budget. Talking specifically about the additions, I'm going to try to detail these as much as I can at this point based on the information that we have available. We have more students who've been identified by the Committee on Special Education who qualify for and are referred into our life skills classes at Columbia High School. We need to add a teacher in order to be able to provide that program at an estimated expense of 83390 Each of these expenses, when it comes to salaries, is the total budgeted expense. It's not necessarily just the salary. It's the health insurance, which is more than $20,000 per employee. It's our contribution to the retirement system, which is a percentage of the overall salary, depending on whether the employee is in the teacher retirement system or the employee retirement system. It's FICA, it's all of the other expenses associated with benefits. We've talked in the past about the expansion of the number of children that come to our district who require by state regulation, English as a new language service, DW stands for district-wide. We don't exactly know where the new position would be assigned yet. It will be based on the schedule of services required. You see that that cost is the same cost projected as the special ed teacher. That is based on an assumption that the teacher would be coming in at a salary at about step three and the full cost of the benefits. A point two social studies increase is needed to adjust to the enrollment in the middle school. We have a part-time person who would be adjusted up in an increase of point two. Uh, Mr. Leonard has asked to provide some assistant coaches to our varsity level teams. One of the advantages of having assistant coaches is to have an extra person in supervision of students, particularly in away contests when we have an injury or we have a problem that needs to be dealt with, we can have one person manage the team, another person respond to the emergency. Additionally, we have tried over the course of the last few years to maintain as many students on the sidelines and as part of our team, be able to manage that process. 
safely and to be able to manage the process that promotes participation. Uh, we think in some sports, the assistant coaches would be needed. Right now, we've only included three among the number of requests. And at this point, we're thinking that we would put an assistant coach in at the varsity field hockey level, the varsity wrestling level, and at boys and girls cross country with some further determinations to be made. Modified cross country would be a new team and a new offering so that our middle school kids could compete on a separate team. Currently, they are competing with junior varsity and varsity level students. This would give them more opportunity to be competitive, more opportunities to participate, and we think that that cost of $5,000 is a good investment per child. The human resource generalist is a position that would support our director of human resources. Our human resources office has become a very important resource to ensure that we recruit, we hire, and we support the best process we can to hire the best quality people that East Greenbush uh, can hire. Additionally, the office has absorbed other responsibilities, including uh, issues associated with training. Our human resource officer, officer uh, office also interacts and works with employee difficulties, problems, uh, for example, leave requests, and other things that may not necessarily be um, visible to the community. It's a very busy office. And despite the increases and the changes that we've made in central administration, we've only maintained one and a half support positions within that office. So I also provided some additional detail to the board uh, today, and I will also speak to that detail uh, at the next board meeting. The database specialist is a position that was a 10-month position entitled uh, under an old civil service title, but I can't think of the name of the title right now, Linda. Data Entry Machine Operator. Data Entry Machine Operator. That position was vacated in October by a retirement. We have one individual in the data and technology office that is doing right now all of the work that he was doing regarding data reporting and compliance with SED, including other issues associated with COVID where reporting has been required. We left that position vacant, not by design, but because we could not match the duties that are associated with what we need in the office with the old job description and the title. And secondly, we want to convert that position to one that can complement and support the higher level work that Todd Witherall is doing in the data office right now um, with moving that position from a 10 month position to a 12 month position. And in a later slide, I will show the difference in the cost. So some of the money associated with this position was left in the budget this year because the position was just vacated this year. We want to increase it to a 12 month position and it, it will have greater responsibility. So the total of the positions that have been added amounts to approximately $428,000. Some of the other items are listed on the right side of the slide. Passport for Good is a software program and an application that will help students earn credit for all the community service and volunteer work that they do. We're thinking about developing a program at the high school that promotes more community service than what we're already doing. And we wanna have kids get credit for the work that they do to help the community. The textbook series, US History, World History and Science. Those are recommendations that came through the Committee of Curriculum Study. We've had a concerted effort over the last several years to align our textbooks and instructional materials with the new standards. In this particular expense, at, by the next meeting, probably sooner, we will have identified whether or not we can go forward and perhaps purchase this, these items out of the 2021-22 budget. Then we can remove that expense from the 2022-23 budget. There are some other items that we believe 
we also might be able to pay for, depending on where our fund balance is projected, and I expect that the board will receive a fund balance projection uh, within the next week to 10 days. And I expect that we will present that fund balance projection at the meeting in April. PowerSchool cloud hosting is an upgrade to our current uh, technology. The building furniture and equipment allocation has been adjusted slightly to accommodate some furniture requests. We are still going to engage in a process to inventory what we already have before we buy new furniture. And the student finder card equipment is equipment necessary for the students to be able to swipe a card as they get on the bus. And we will know that who is riding the bus and it will cut down on some of the work that is happening in the transportation department. It will give us an exact uh, electronic report of who's riding the bus every day, instant access to that. There is equipment that is necessary to reissue new cards. We don't anticipate that kindergartners are always going to remember their card, know where their card is. Uh, this is equipment that we've been working on this year, but we need the equipment to be able to issue and program the new cards. So all in total, within this particular budget, we are presenting this evening, the total expenses added, new items are 686,009. To highlight some of the details of the new positions, the salary for the human resource generalist is comparable, comparable to some of the confidential clerical employees that currently work in the central office. It is not an administrative certificated position. The salary range would be between 60 and $65,000. The expenses, including the contributions to FICA, employee retirement, family insurance bring the total budgeted cost for that position up to about a hundred thousand dollars you see similar with a database specialist the salary is 71 762 calculating all of the expenses but we've eliminated we've eliminated the data entry operator which was a 59,379 so the actual net increase associated with this position for next year is 48,785 and the additional teacher positions again we budget for step three that doesn't mean we always are able to hire at step three we budget for the contributions to the teacher retirement system and we always budget for family insurance although as you saw when we reported how we were doing within the federal grants a couple of weeks ago if someone selects individual insurance or doesn't take the insurance, we, bro we broker that savings within the budget. So, but we have to assume expenses at the highest level. And then if we don't um, incur that expense, well, we, we wind up saving money within the overall budget. Salaries and benefits of our employees are the highest uh, percentage of our budget at about 77.4%. The number of positions that we have reflect the number of students that we have. We do a staffing projection each year annually where we can reduce, we strive to reduce. We are currently looking at positions that may be vacated in areas such as teaching assistance and other areas for adjustments across the district. We want to be able not only to reduce expenses within the general fund budget, but we are slowly reducing the number of expenses within the federal grants that we will not have after 2024. And we're working through that process, in particular with our, our um, teaching assistants, because we added many teaching assistants over the last couple of years to assist with COVID, but we aren't gonna be able to sustain that level because those federal programs, which currently fund about 17 teaching assistant positions, aren't gonna be here in two years. So we anticipate moving our teaching assistant total positions down uh, by about 5.2 positions next year, but we haven't made any final determinations as to where those will, where those will fall and how those reassignments will occur. The board in the community has supported in past years, utilizing our transportation reserve. Uh, this year, we are proposing to purchase eight new buses as part of our transportation replacement schedule. 
The total cost of those five buses, which includes 366 passenger buses, two wheelchair buses, and 335 passenger buses, is 752468 Those monies are not part of the general fund budget amount. They are monies that have been set aside and voted on by the community to use solely for the purpose of replacing aging buses. When we look at how we utilize our transportation reserve, we look at the mileage on our buses. We also want to make sure that all of our buses are able to be maintained to provide safety. If we find that based on the review of our mechanics, as well as, I don't know that everybody knows, that the New York State uh, Department of Motor Vehicles comes in on a regularly scheduled basis, pulls some of our buses out of the fleet, and does inspections on a regular basis. If we find that the money we're putting into these buses um, is becoming costly, or if we find that there are any issues regarding potential safety, we strive to try to replace those particular buses. Newer buses are operating uh, more efficiently. Uh, we are curious to see what the state will come out with regarding the uh, promotion of the use of electric buses. We don't have any guidance on that yet. Once we receive that, we will take a look at that. The purchase of electric buses does have implications not only for our budget, but it also has implications for decisions that we make regarding the tanks, for example, and the equipment that we put in to be able to provide diesel or gasoline. We have to take a look at how, over time, the use of electric buses, which we support, uh, may change some of the decisions that we might need to make now. And also, we have not heard of any uh, additional funds that the state is going to provide to buy these electric buses. We hope that, I know that that is a conversation occurring in Albany right now. For every dollar we spend out of the reserve to buy a new bus, we get about 68 cents back on the dollar through state transportation aid. That transportation aid goes right back into the reserve to save to purchase future buses. So it's a cycle. We buy the bus, we receive the state aid, we put it back into the reserve, and then the board makes a determination at the end of each school year, if there's our monies left over in the general fund budget, the board establishes reserves, and one of those reserves and choices that the board can make is to put more money in the transportation reserve, and I believe the board approved uh, an additional allocation to the transportation reserve last year. So the reserve is limited. We have to only maintain that reserve for 15 years or $5 million in total deposits. We have to have voter approval in order to take money out of that reserve to buy the buses. The board can choose to put additional funds in the reserve. 68% of the eligible costs are paid over five years, and we avoid the principal and interest that would be associated on the local taxpayers of borrowing the money to buy the bus because we already have that money set aside in savings, so to speak. Additionally, there are two items that were shared with the board regarding replacing a truck that is currently used for plowing and salting. And there was a lawnmower proposal that we asked Mr. Bickle to review to find a smaller lawnmower, less expensive. This is another area that we are looking to purchase possibly out of this year's budget. That would reduce by about 131,000 the budget for next year by taking the, those items out. We haven't made that determination. Again, we wanna look at the fund balance projections. A capital reserve fund, we don't currently have a capital reserve fund but we have talked about this in the context of all of the facilities work that we are doing now. There's currently a $39.7 million capital project which continues to occur in the district, We're hoping that that project will be completed over the summer and again into next year. However, as we have engaged in our capital project work, we are recognizing that because we have well-kept buildings, but they are older, there are a lot of expenses associated, and we, I, I do anticipate that the next building condition survey will, ex, will include a number of issues that really are going to be required to be addressed. Plumbing, plumbing mechanical, electrical, 
things that typically are unseen but need to be addressed in order to have well-functioning, efficient buildings. We're talking about routine things that need to be replaced. For example, electrical systems that might be 20 years old, plumbing, asbestos abatement, things that always are, are necessary to maintain. So how a capital reserve would work is the board reviews monies that are left over at the end of any given school year. And the board, if you choose, would put out a separate proposition on the vote day for the public to approve and authorize the establishment of a capital reserve. The capital reserve has a term of about 10 years, and the board can choose to fund that capital reserve up to $5 million over the 10-year period. It doesn't mean that we're going to have $5 million at the end of this year to put into the capital reserve. It means over a 10-year period, the board can make a choice to continue to fund that when we have unspent budget up to a maximum of $5 million over a 10-year period. Funding of the reserve requires Board of Education approval. Taking the money out of the reserve requires voter approval. So hypothetically, if we put out a capital project in two to three years and we have this reserve established, let's say, for example, we have a small capital project of $10 million, the total cost. Our building aid that we qualify for on portions of the project that are eligible for aid is about 72%. If you just take, for an example, $10 million proposed project, 72% of that project is going to be reimbursed over a 15 year period. So we would receive $7.2 million back from the state over a 15 year period. The board could choose to take the $2.8 million that otherwise would be billed into the school district budget with principal and interest payments over the period of that project and take the money out of the capital reserve, pay that $2.8 million and the taxpayers pay zero. Now in the past, we have done capital projects and timed them so that debt was coming off the district budget as new debt was coming on. This is different than that. This is an actual zero if the board had enough money to be able to allocate towards the local share. It can also be used simply to lower the local share portion of the project. And we think as we've looked at our audits over the course of the last few years, we've been able to maintain our actual expenditures below our budget, in difficult times, we have still been able to maintain appropriate reserves. And in terms of the stability of the district and saving local taxpayers, we think that this capital reserve makes a lot of sense. And I'm going to ask Linda to help me with anything I may have missed or didn't explain very well. Thank you, Mr. Simons. I think you explained it very well. It really is. It works very um, similar to our reserve for buses. So um, if we have money to put in there at the end of the year, the board can decide to fund that reserve that way. We can build that up, not to exceed $5 million, but we can build it up. Uh, it can get to $3 million. Let's use that as an example. And if we have a project in place, we can use either all or part of that money. So it, it really does avoid the cost of borrowing money. So what question, Linda, so in a proposition situation where it's a capital project uh, for voter approval, would there also at the same time have to be a capital reserve fund expenditure approval from the, the voters too, separate? So the potential is that could be voted down. Right? Well, it it's a separate a, approval process, right? It is a separate approval okay. process. Uh, it doesn't have to be done at the same time. It would be part of planning the next capital project okay. uh, so that if we estimated an amount that was be in there, we would pull that money out at different times over a few different years as the project went on. It could be used all at once in one year, or it could be used over several years. The board we, can always choose, let's say the proposition passed, yep. but the capital, the board can always choose to revisit the proposition, lower the, lower the total cost of the proposition to offset the fact that the capital reserve use was not approved. Sure. Hope so. And would there be a potential of using it for other purposes? I mean, I, I'm looking at the list here. It says machinery apparatus. Well, that would be machinery that is included in a capital project. 
Right. It has to be part of a capital project. So HVAC equipment, um, <laughs> I can't think of it. This is this is the technology uh, that might be involved. Yeah. If you're upgrading, if you're upgrading an infrastructure for technology and there was equipment associated with that, but depending on what that technology was, you could utilize that. It depends on whether it was a considered to be an approved project, part of the approved project from SED. So instead of taking on the additional debt to pay that piece or coming out of the general fund, we would use the reserve to really offset that. That's correct. And and in addition to principal and interest on debt, there is an expense to us issuing debt. Um, we work with capital markets, our fiscal advisors, but that's pretty expensive when we actually go out to bond. So part of the process of developing the capital project would be to determine not only the overall scope of the project, but whether or not the board was going to use all or part of the capital reserve. And then you project out over a 15 year period because school reconstruction is reimbursed over a 15 year period. What the local taxpayer cost would be in the annual budget over that 15 year period and then you try to offset that by determining what level of the capital reserve you might want to use. For example, you might not want to use all of the capital reserve. Sure. You're also going to want to look at your your uh, your other reserves and your fund balance picture at that time to know whether or not you would be able to potentially make further contributions to that reserve. Yeah. Thank you. One more consideration also is that funding that reserve that can be done uh, by board approval. Uh, it would be the interest or any investment earnings on that money would also go back into that reserve. And, and we can even elect to put, as we do transportation aid in the bus reserve, some building aid in the um, capital reserve. Oh. The transportation reserve is a form of capital of a capital reserve. Sure. Yep. So uh, between now and our next meeting, uh, we should receive the final state budget, which we're anticipating would include at least the amount of state aid that we're projected to receive. We are continuing to look at our grade level sections, uh, as well as other areas of the district. We anticipate that some teachers uh, will move from one building to another this year because we have lower enrollments in some grade levels. Uh, we've informed our administrators of some of those changes that may occur. We've talked to the teachers union about it. Our class sizes in some of our kindergarten, first and second grades are lower than typically uh, average what we've had. Uh, and uh, at Red Mill, for example, we anticipate that the kindergarten will be very high and so we're going to need to add sections there. So rather than hire additional teachers, we're going to be making some shifts. We looked at our class size guidelines. We discussed how those shifts could be made to make sure that the class sizes were as equitable as possible. And uh, two of the elementary school vacancies from retirement will be filled by two people that uh, would be shifted from the federal funds, those early intervention specialists. And we will continue that process as more positions become available. So at this point, we are recommending moving forward and continuing to develop the budget to get our tax levy increase down as much as we can. We will be recommending the use of the transportation reserve uh, we will recommend uh, establishing the capital reserve and we will have three board member seats up for election on May 17th. So here we are on March 23rd. Uh, we have uh, board candidate petitions. So reminders to incumbents who may be considering running again. Those petitions are due back to the district office by March 28th. Uh, we're going to have a discussion of this date this evening because there's another event that some of the board members and administrators may want to attend on April 13th. So we may change that date for the proposed budget adoption. The deadline for board petitions 
is April 18th. Excuse me, this is when they're available, March 28th, April 18th. You still have time. <laughs> and I misspoke. <laughs> it make everybody nervous. And um, we'll have a public hearing, official public hearing on the budget on May 4th. And uh, we invite all of the community to come out and vote for our budget on Tuesday, May 17th. And I will take any questions, concerns, or ideas the board would like us to explore. Okay, board members, opportunity to ask questions at all. Anything that so when you, you said you expect to try to get that down to zero percent. As close as I can. Um as close, right, to zero, right. Down. I always say that. I think um, we'll, I think we'll be able to do that, but we have we want to make sure that we can do that with a level of assurances that we can meet. The expense side of the budget. The other one of the factors would be state aid. If state aid comes in lower or higher, that has an that has an overall impact on our levy. It, I mean, but hopefully, based on what uh, 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 our guest speaker Donald hope, uh, last last yeah meeting, John McDonald yeah John McDonald you know saying that this was one of the best years you know budget wise and stuff for education so. You know, I really would like to, you know, uh, get as close to that zero as possible. I think we will. I'm 90% sure we will. So, Jeff, um, thank you for the presentation. It was very good. Um, yeah, I, I, I am in support of the Capitol. I, I, think, muted, yeah. I, I think that's very important. Uh, Michelle, here. Michelle, we're having trouble hearing you. Oh. Can you hear me now? <laughs> we cannot hear you. We can hear a word you're saying. <laughs> mute, unmute, no? Yeah. Looks like you're okay. Yeah, can she type it in the chat? That's odd. No, I'm sorry. We can't hear you, Michelle. Just qualify. You want to put something in the chat? If somebody, if you want to put something <laughs> in the chat, Somebody with better can, eyes than me can, yeah. can read me. it. <laughs> <laughs> While we're waiting, when we've been when we've been reviewing all of this information, the 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 fact that the class sizes are lower than typical is a good thing when we can afford it, because we still have our children making progress and recovering from the year that the pandemic impacted us the most. So if we were in a financial crunch, and just to be transparent, we could reduce the number of elementary positions by four at least and stay within our class size goals. However, we are not able to do that through attrition. We have some very good people. So there's two reasons why we wanna have a budget that supports uh, lower class sizes than may be typical. One, better student contact time, more support for the kids at the early primary levels. We've seen the data on how the kids are progressing through the uh, work that we're doing with early intervention. Secondly, the only way that we could reduce those people would be to lay them off and we don't want to do that because we're not forced to do that by financial circumstances. But when you actually use the num look at the numbers, we could, we could reduce by four, but we would have class sizes that were larger and we would have uh, good people uh, leave us. That doesn't mean that uh, as, as things get better and financial uh, circumstances get tighter, that we wouldn't look to achieve efficiencies through attrition, and we do. We just did not have a lot of retirements this year. I think everybody wants to wait who's eligible for retirement until we are into a normal, yeah. normal cycle of school which is great because we have excellent people. John? Okay. Can somebody read the chat? Uh, the chat says, uh, thank you for the presentation. I am echoing the comments from Mark and I am sure we will. Also like the idea of the Capital Reserve, I think it sets us up well for the future. Uh, thank you, Michelle. We're going to do our best between now and either April 13th, 12th or 14th to bring this down. And I think we can do it. I'm 
I, Linda and I have really been pushing. Maybe I've been pushing more on Linda. <laughs> Johnny, and and she's been responsive. <laughs> Jennifer? Jennifer? Yeah, I just had a question. Um, so if we were to vote to start the Capital Reserve, which I agree with Michelle is a good idea, um, in some crazy world, if we did not have capital projects, um, you know, what would happen to those monies? Would they, after a certain amount of time, be released back into the general budget? That's a great question. Yeah. So, so if over 10 years we don't have a capital project, which we don't see happening, small, but however, um, what happens is at the end of the 10 years, it can be used to pay down some debt, but it can also be used to go back into the general fund and reduce the levy. Okay. And then if you had, so if we use, let's say 50% of that capital reserve, and then we had a remaining balance and after the 10 years, the, those contingencies would still be on the balance? Well, uh, we could still, we could do that, or we could open a new capital reserve okay. and transfer the balance okay. to the new reserve okay. and move forward on another 10 years. Which we do in transportation, we do that, yeah. Yeah. John? Thank you for the thorough presentation. Just a couple of comments. We focus on the zero a lot, and I'm a supporter of that, being that we want to make our district as attractive and as affordable for people that we can. But I also have a concern when we focus on a zero exclusively. Maintaining the programming and when we fixate on meeting a budget line, we need to remind ourselves why we're here and what we're doing and how we're servicing people. And I think you did a good job of reminding us of that. And the reason I say that is because the people most affected by budget cuts are the marginalized student population. Um, they're the folks that we're really working in overtime to serve. The kids in the middle uh, don't fall into the gaps because they have a lot of things going for them other than us. And as we go through this budget process, I don't want to lose sight of that and at least speak to it publicly. When we look at the increases that we have had over the last two years with inflation and budget things that we cannot control being salaries and and, and costs to do business, it's probably went up at least uh, on the low end 6% over the last two years. We've had no budget increase over the last two years, or at least proposing that. So with that being said, um, in my position, if you have to keep a little bit to move us forward and continue to service the students in the way that our goals and objectives may, I really think that we as a board need to look at that as well. And again, I'm not, I don't want anybody to think I'm encouraging going out and spending money, but as we go through this process, I think it's really important that we focus and really explain our positions to the public and what, what is driving us to get there. So again, I think the path that you're on is, is bringing us to that point, but I just wanted to have that conversation because I really am concerned in this state of the world and, and where things are going about the, the marginalized students in, in our population. Thank you. There, there were some conversations yesterday in Albany advocating for more dedicated money for mental health services for students. Um, so we may, see some monies that come dedicated from the state for mental health, which I know has been an important priority of our board uh, for many years, but in particular uh, as after the pandemic. The other thing I wanted to just comment on the tax levy and the tax rates. One of the things that has benefited taxpayers of our school district, last year the board chose to keep the levy the same as the previous year with a 0% tax increase, but everybody's tax bills went down. Tax rates went down in every municipality. That's because the tax levy was spread over a larger property tax base. That trend of the property tax base is continuing. So, and I'm not saying we're not gonna get to zero, 
but even a small tax levy increase on the part of the board could potentially yield tax rates going down again because our property values are growing so uh, so well. Is that correct, Linda? That's correct. So one of the things you worry about down the road is you want to continue to say, well, you have the resources and can maintain programs, we can keep the tax levy low. Maybe it's a, maybe it's a zero again this year. But at some point, the local revenue will need to be collected to offset expenses. And we just don't want to see our taxpayers experience a year to year spike, uh, even if it was even if it was a small uh, tax levy increase. So we just in the way that we talk about this need to make sure that when we can do it, we're going to do it. Uh, it, but it can't be done every year without hurting programs. And a lot of it is predicated on what we get from the state. Well, it's interesting that you, I wasn't going to go into that, but I, mm -hmm. uh, that's where I was driving is that if we continue to produce such low tax rates at some point in time, it's, it will bottom out and we'll have to spike because of things that are not under our control. And I would rather have a gradual increase that is more affordable and steady than to have be presented with a, a five or a six um, that shocks people in that respect. And I, I uh, that's where I was kind of going with it is I'd rather give a little bit each time rather than have to take a big bite at, out of that apple and, and try to cover the whole thing. And that is my same philosophy with the capital reserve, you know, is I think it is very prudent to be very mindful of, of our spending, which I think we are. Uh, you guys do a great job, but I also uh, am a very so good supporter of savings and being mindful of savings. Again, we must remember that it is the, the people's money that we are spending uh, as well as our own. Uh, I don't like my tax rate at this point. Either. <laughs> Any other questions? Just a comment. Um, you know, one of the things we'd look at too is that or potentially we could afford a $3 million increase in the budget. It's about 3%, right, Jeff? Yes. Um, without having to go to the taxpayers for more money because increases in aid hopefully come through. But also we're talking about being able to fund a substantial amount into a capital reserve. That's right. Right. So right. we're not cutting the budget per se. We're increasing the budget. We're just maintaining the tax levy at a rate that reflects, to me this year anyway, the fact that we've seen some substantial increases in aid that will help us quite a bit. That's right. We've been very prudent in the past with our reserves and our general fund reserves to make sure that we're prudent. And I do agree with John that long range planning um, to make sure that we don't have those spikes and we manage our reserves carefully will help to manage those increases over time. Because really it's not just the district that's facing the cost increases. It's also right. the, the taxpayers with fuel and you know right. food and those kinds of things. So our taxes are pretty high already. We just don't want to push them to a point in the next year or so that right. is going to be detrimental to the taxpayer as well. So um, I think it's a strong budget. Um, I appreciate the fact that we can still work on it some more. Um, I did ask for the detail. And I hope we get that in a couple of weeks. We expect it before a couple of weeks. So okay. Linda and I touched base today. We think we'll be able to get mm -hmm. <laughs> the fund balance projection, okay. the, line, the line item budget documents, okay. and the, what was the third thing? What was the third thing? No, that's it. Uh, oh, 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 uh, the final, what we, what we believe the final, the final. I asked for uh, two, I don't want the third one. The final expenditure, uh, what was expenditures would sure. be sure. Understood. Uh, by Understood. the fourth okay. of April. Right, so okay. what we'll do is um, that, that line item detail. I know there was a third thing, Linda, but I can't think. <laughs> well, that line item detail will come along with whatever adjustments are made yep. to get to that, um, whatever the adjustment adjusted sure. budget will be. Okay. And I think an important part of that is the fund balance projection okay. so that we can look at possibly funding the um, bus reserves, possibly um, purchasing, making some purchases this year. Uh, one of the things that I did want to mention also is that um, additional savings that we'll see this year is that we had items in the budget this year that we were able to charge off to the federal grants. So that is producing a savings in our general fund this year. Thanks, John.
Okay, good conversation. Thank you for the presentation and we'll move to our next item, discussion items. The draft calendar for 22-23. Um, who's gonna take the lead on that? Well, let Marissa Cannon and Jim McHugh explain the changes to the calendar. Okay, okay. thank you, Mr. Simons. Uh, so our proposed 2022-2023 calendar, um, some of the highlights include um, three superintendents conference days at the beginning of the school year, August 29th, August 30th, and August 31st. Um, we have two full days of professional development, one being on September 2nd and the other being on March 17th, which is also the Questar Regional Professional Development Day. The first day for students will occur on September 6th. We will be observing the Yom Kippur um, Jewish holiday on October 5th. Uh, we have five emergency closing days built into the school calendar for inclement weather. Um, and we will also um, be recognizing Juneteenth, um, which is um, a fairly new state holiday. Does anyone have any questions? Questions, board members? No, good, all right, thank you. Next discussion item is the update on the pre-K planning. I'm gonna kick this over to Linda Wagger. Okay, thank you. Uh, the district is looking to expand our universal pre-K program next year. We have identified um, spaces in three of our buildings where we could have one classroom each of 18 students. Uh, so we are planning to uh, continue the services administered by Quest R3 BOCES, and we are planning to have one classroom of 18 students for a total of 54 students at Red Mill Elementary, Donald P. Sutherland Elementary, and Janae Elementary. Uh, the program will be, which is uh, free to families, will be funded um, by the UPK state aid that we receive, which is $5,400 per student. Uh, the American Rescue Plan, which I have already budgeted for $199,980 for next year for pre-K. And uh, so we'll need an additional 50232 to meet the total cost of 440 541-812. That 50,232, as I presented um, to you earlier, is I, I believe we can reallocate some of the federal funds that was excess for this year, which was budgeted, which were budgeted for benefits. I think we can use that money, reallocate that for towards the pre-K program next year. So this program will be fully funded through state aid and federal funds. We have advertised uh, information about our pre-K program on our website. We have started receiving applications. We are near or slightly above the 100 mark, and we will be receiving applications through April 6th. And then we have a lottery selection planned for Monday, April 11th at six o'clock in the Janae Auditorium. All are welcome to attend. Are there any questions? Board members, any discussion on the uh, pre-K? We talked about this a little bit last time. So it would just kind of be, a net neutral. So we have the one at Red Mill now, and it would just be adding the two additional classes. We have two classrooms at Red Mill. Oh, With the increase in K and in kindergarten enrollment, we're going to have to move one of them out of there. So we'll have one classroom at Red Mill, one at DPS, one at Janae. So they're pretty well spread out throughout the district. That's great. Yeah, I fully support this. I think I want to appreciate the uh, the second look that Mr. Alvey and Mr. Grignan to, to, to have the classes at DPS. Thank you, Mr. Alvey. I think that would be a, an important addition to our community in that area, as well to um, utilize the space at Janae, which is substantial. And we know that Red Mill is growing. So, all right. No other uh, comments or questions? All right. So you may recall last year we had the board approve a resolution for the contract with Questar. Once we have more detail and working collaboratively with Questar, we bring that to a future meeting. Sounds good. Very good. Okay, moving on to regular business, approval of programs for resident children with disabilities. Any questions or comments? I need a motion to approve that. Joanne, second. Jennifer, all those in favor? 
approved. We have a resolution for a teaching assistant tenure. Janelle Tiley, any questions or comments on that? Need a motion to approve that? Kathleen, I need a second. Michelle, all those in favor? Approved, congratulations Mrs. Tiley. Committee reports, moving to Marissa. Okay, thank you Mr. Buno. For staffing, um, we were anticipating uh, conducting the athletic director interviews on Monday and Tuesday of this week. Unfortunately, we had one individual withdraw their candidacy um, and another had a, a medical condition. So we did postpone those interviews um, and we're looking to um, interview um, in mid-April um, just to ensure that we have the most qualified pool of candidates. We also extended the posting for another three weeks. That posting will close on April 11th. All of the individuals who um, were scheduled with an interview um, have been advised that um, they will have that interview occur um, in mid-April. Our school lunch manager posting closed. We're currently in the process of reviewing those applicants and we are looking to schedule interviews the second week of April. And then um, our second senior bus driver posting um, closed as well. We have five applicants and we will be holding those interviews next week. Question for Marissa. Can I ask a question? So the school lunch manager, is it is that the official civil service title? Yes. Is do we call it internally the same thing? Is it isn't it really like food services or food, I'm just curious? Food service director. <laughs> whatever I think we whatever say internally. attracts the best candidate in terms of like <laughs> the title is like school lunch. They do more than that, is what I'm saying. It's a it's a comprehensive position that involves yes. a lot. Um, and and we retitling did. it somehow or posting it differently. Yeah, we did get a um, very good applicant oh, good. pool, okay. so right. we are pleased with that. Okay, good. It's kind of an unusual thing. We have a few current uh, food service directors. In yeah. The, yeah, so I know what you're saying. Yeah, it's school lunch manager in my prior district was an in-building position <laughs> in right. the kitchen. This is more of an overspend yeah, exactly. the whole program. So. Yeah, kind of an antiquated title. Sometimes the, the names of the titles are just a little outdated. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Marissa. Linda? The Finance and Audit Committee has met a, a couple of times, and um, the purpose of our recent meetings is to decide on an independent auditor for what will be the next three years. So we uh, issued an RFP for independent audit services, and for a five-year term, uh, we, resp we received responses from Five, five firms, and we'll discuss this a little bit later. We have the, the contract and the recommendation by the committee as an addendum. Very good, any questions from Linda? Thanks Linda and thanks for the committee. Jim, at this time, Jeff. Yes, our committee on global education met on March 8th. Uh, we shared some professional development experiences that we were all uh, fortunate to participate in over the few last few weeks. Uh, additionally, we had members of the committee come forward interested in uh, coordinating some efforts for help and relief uh, for the folks in Ukraine. Uh, there are several projects uh, that are ongoing, including an event that will be occurring on Saturday, April 2nd. We're calling it Fill the Bus. Uh, we have been coordinating our efforts with the Ukrainian church in Waterfleet, and uh, they have had a number of um, donations and collections virtually filling the church. There are uh, considerations regarding the cost that the Ukrainian church incurs to ship items over to Ukraine, so they are specifying that what they really need our medical supplies and first aid supplies. And they are asking all the organizations within the region to, to uh, look at their list of needed items, but to limit their donations to those particular kinds of items, because that's what the people in Ukraine uh, really need right now. So all of this effort is being coordinated by a number of committee members, uh, as well as uh, the uh, student council at Goff Middle School. Mark Halsey has volunteered his time to drive the bus. Uh, uh, private contributions are being utilized to pay for the fuel. 
So there's really no taxpayer money going into this. It is all volunteerism and private contributions. And in this event that the, um, the Committee on Global Education felt strongly about, as did others. Additionally, um, I was able to participate in a workshop at the Council of School Superintendents that was focused on tying in the efforts that are going on to uh, address social emotional learning in students with, um, with diversity. And from that workshop, I took an idea of trying to come up with a theme next year among all of our schools and even organizations within the community to emphasize uh, unity and togetherness and acceptance. So I've challenged the committee to come up with a theme and some ideas for activities that everybody in the East Greenbush School community could be involved in, including a one book, one school initiative where everybody reads the same book, including people that go to the public library, community organizations within the town. We're gonna to select something that's unifying, that's positive, and uh, have a number of activities next year going on throughout the year on the, on the theme of making sure everybody feels like they belong and doing it in a real positive way. Nice. And the committee jumped on it. Uh, I'm interested in seeing what they propose, uh, but they're working on it right now. Excellent. Thank you to the work of the committee. Hey, Mike. Yes, so Mark. Hey, just to piggyback off what Jeff said about the, um, the donations to the Ukrainian church, um, I had the opportunity to speak with one of their members today and all next week, Monday through Friday, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., they are actually looking for help to pack all this stuff uh, into boxes to uh, put on the trucks to ship out. So I do have the contact information. If anybody's interested, I'm going to go over there uh, next week myself and, and, and help pack some of the boxes so they can get them on the truck and, and get them out to a uh, shipping company down in New Jersey um, by next week. So Excellent. Excellent. All right. Contact Mark if you're interested in participating in that. Okay. Any other comments? No. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. Table motions. We have none at this time. Um, old business board members, anything to bring up? No. Okay. Moving to the consent agenda, I do have a request to hold item C for a separate vote. Any questions or comments on the consent agenda in items A through H? And we'll pull item C. Anyone? No? All right. I need a motion to approve consent agenda uh, except for item C. Michelle, second John. All those in favor? Approved. Moving to item C. I need a motion to approve that. Kathleen, I need a second. John, all those in favor? All those abstaining? One. Okay, Joel, thank you. Got it. Next item is the uh, what Linda talked about with the uh, audit committee and the um, proposal for the independent auditing services. Any questions or comments on that? The addendum? I need a motion to approve that. John and Michelle, all those in favor? Approved. Thank you. And they do a great job, right? I like them, Linda, right? What idea was that? They do nice job. Yeah, they've been here. Uh, new business. Um, there was a request to review the board meeting. We have a uh, a CASDA uh, dinner that folks would like to attend. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Leonard is being honored. Uh, I know he doesn't like these kinds of things, but he's going to get <laughs> honored whether he wants it or not. Uh, again, for being selected as the athletic director uh, in Section Two of the year. So. CASDA, which is the Capital Association School Development Agency, is restoring their annual dinner to honor various individuals. And I know a number of our board members and I would like to go. So we're wondering if we can change the April 13th board meeting. So anybody who would like to go, uh, district will pick up the tab for the cost of the tickets. Okay. That's okay with the board. Okay. So April 12th, is there any deadlines? Because that's the presentation adoption of the budget, Linda, right? April 13th. Is there any concerns? Any concerns about deadlines? If we move it to the 12th or the 14th. We're still good? We're fine. Okay. Any preference, Tuesday or? What time is the Quest Star? I think actually the Quest Star is the 13th as well, Mark. That's six. It was what, that Wednesday? Yeah, I looked it up. It's the 13th, yeah. Same day as ours. 12th or 14th? 
Any preference? Or do you want us to poll and let, get it back to us? What do you think? I'll be away that week, so I, I won't be Either way you're going. Regardless, okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyone? 12 looks good. 12, 12 looks good? 12 looks good tonight. Okay, let's uh, send out maybe a notice for the 12th. Okay, very good. And people just confirm that you're able to make it. Michelle, did you catch that for the 12th? Okay, very good. Very good. Still having sound issues, it sounds like. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know. Am I? Can you hear me? Your, your thing lights up, but it doesn't. Uh, yeah. There's nothing going on. A little square. My Hollywood square words up. <laughs> That's too bad. Okay. Um, all right. We're moving. Uh, any other new business board members? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, public forum number two. Anyone from the public like to speak? I see Mr. Styles is here. Hi, Mr. Styles. Good to see you again. Um, nothing from the public at this time. Board forum. I'll start with my right. Frank, anything? Yes, sir. Good. Joanne? Kathleen? Jennifer? Mark? Just a little bit of follow up on the bus patrol project. We're, yep. we're uh, a little bit closer. The county is supposed to, um, at their April 12th meeting, <laughs> uh, uh, pass the resolution. And then we as a district have to um, pass a resolution that I believe. The attorneys are writing for us or have written for us. Yes, received it this afternoon. Yep. And um, to jump on board with the county, I spoke to the bus patrol folks today, hoping that, you know, we can have lists uh, implemented by next school year. Um, and, and finally, you know, get this off the ground because it's going on a, over a year, year and a half now. So, but we're, we're a little bit closer um, to, finalizing this and um then we just have to sign an opt-in agreement yes that jeff has forwarded to our attorneys to look at and uh so should should be there hopefully yeah. soon that's good it's excellent i know that was a priority in our board goals so very good thanks john good Cheryl, good michelle we can't hear you but you're welcome to put something in the chat if you want to <laughs> One of the things I wanted to mention is in one of our board goals is also to, um, you know, develop, implement, and support programs for students pursuing goals dedicated to the trade industry. And recently, there was a Skills USA competition, a regional competition at the Stratton uh, Air National Guard base, and our East Greenwood students fared very well in that regional competition. So, congratulations to those students in the high school that will be moving on to states, and we're going to do a story about those kids. So, thank you for awesome. supporting those opportunities for our students and and continue to support our board goal to support students uh, in the trades as well. Great. Great. Thank you. All right. Any other comments at all by the board? All right, we'll close the board forum and then we do have need for an executive session, Mr. Simon. Uh, yeah, so we're going to, Michelle, we'll send out a separate link for the executive session. Uh, so it'll be about five minutes. About five minutes. We're gonna stay in here. Okay, we'll stay in here and then we don't anticipate any other uh, board business after the executive session, so. Everyone have a great night. Thank you.